Hi, this is Eric Fox with BSD Systems. I just wanted to show you real quick how I uh, back up Windows machines using a Linux utility called rsync. So, the first thing we have to do is install rsync. Uh, it's a free utility and it comes with a version of Linux that's compiled to run on Windows called Sigwin. Sigwin is spelled C-Y-G-W-I-N. Uh, go ahead and click the install link. Here's the setup script that's all we need, our setup program. I just uh, save it to the desktop. It doesn't take very long, it's a very small program. And there we have it on the desktop. So we want to install from the internet. Leave these as the defaults, uh, c colon backslash sigwin and all users. Uh, this default is fine. It's going to create a folder on the desktop to temporarily store some files in. I have a direct connection to the internet, so uh, I don't need to change this. If you're behind a firewall or a proxy, you'll want to adjust this to fit your uh, needs. Uh, next, sigwin is just kind of a distributed uh, uh, tool. I mean, well, let me rephrase that. They are distributing it through a number of places so that uh, no one machine has a lot of load. So in order to uh, download this one, you need to select which mirror we're going to choose or get it from. And I always like to pick on this kernel.org location. Doesn't matter which one of these, just pick one. Next. This error or warning message is just to let people know if they already have it installed that the format has changed from a previous version. We don't need to worry about it. We'll just click OK. All right, here's the list of packages that make up SIGWIN. We need to add one because not all of them are installed. Notice all these say skip. We want to come down here and find our sync. And that is right here. And we want to change it from skip to the latest version, which is always the first one that comes up. Notice that there's a couple of different versions here. We want the latest one. And then just click Next. And it'll begin downloading all the files. Notice that it created a folder here to store them in. Once it's done downloading, it will install them. And then it'll run a uh, post install script, which will set up a few things for Windows so it can find them. So uh, I'll let this run for a couple of minutes and we'll come back and continue. Okay, we're back. Uh, the setup is mostly complete. It'll have these two boxes here checked initially. We don't need the desktop icon, but you can leave it in the start menu so you can find it later if you wish to play with it. Uh, we really don't need that either, so you can uncheck that too, depending on you know your preferences. So we'll go ahead and click Finish. And now we're done. We don't even need to keep these. So we'll just delete those. Okay, good. Now, here's my USB drive. U colon, it's, back, it's uh, empty. Uh, USB attached drives are great for making backups in this case because they're cheap. Uh, you can get them in a variety of sizes and they're portable so you can back up one uh, on one and you can take it off-site and you can bring another one and plug it in and back that one up and take it off-site as well. Or you can just leave them plugged in all the time. Again, it's your preference. I prefer to rotate them through periodically just so that I have a off-site copy just in case something happens here. Okay, so in our USB drive we're just going to create a folder called Backups to store that in. And in drive C, which is the main drive, you notice here's the SIG1 folder it created. We don't even need to worry about that for now, actually, at all. Now, this backup.bat file I've already created here, but I'll show you what's in it. Uh, we'll edit this. The .bat extension is important. Uh, that tells Windows that that is a script to run at this command. So I'll break down what this all means. So this is the command we're running, the rsync program that we installed along with SIGWIN. Uh, this first set of flags here just says uh, the R is recursive. 
and continue to drop down into folders that are inside of folders so it gets everything. The T says to maintain all the timestamps in our backup copy so that they're the same as the timestamps in the original files. Uh, verbose tells it to give us a listing of all the files that it's backing up. You can remove that if you don't wish to see it. This delete option means that if, you if you've been maintaining backups and you remove a file out of your original files, when, next time you run this program it'll remove it also from the backup. If that's not what you want, then just remove that option. Uh, this is mo mostly for keeping two different sets of files in sync with each other. But uh, if you remove that option, then it'll be a, a good way to just back things up and you don't have to worry about it. if you delete files the uh, backup copies will be kept. So that option is taken out. This is the path that we're backing up. Now here's a quick uh, disc discussion about this. In uh, Linux, which is what rsync is running in, the concept of uh, a C drive or a D drive or a U drive, uh, the UC colon concept is not there. It's all listed in as if it, they were all folders. So in this case, all the hard drives, like C, is located under a folder called SIG drive. I know it's somewhat confusing, but if you just make note of this, that this is C colon, this equates to this up here. And same thing, this equates to U colon. Uh, just stick that in your mind and you'll be fine. So this is the rest of the path, our documents and settings, my account, and my documents. That's what I'm backing up and I'm putting this on the U drive in the backups folder that I just created. Uh, we're saving the changes. I removed the delete option. So now we can run this manually by just double clicking on it and notice it's listing the files as it creates them. Or I should say as it backs them up. It won't take very long. I don't have very much there. Let's go take a look now. You saw that I had created the backup directory. And now there's my documents. And all this stuff is in there. Which is the same as what's in here. Documents and settings. And my documents. Same stuff. So the last step is to schedule this so it happens automatically at a set time. So to do that, we just need to go to Control Panel scheduled tasks and add a scheduled task. Ignore this list because the rsync or our backup script won't be listed there. Just go to browse, drive C, select that backup uh, script, the backup.bat file. We can name this uh, anything we want. I'll name it daily backups. This is just so we can read it in the list and know what it is and of course we want to run this on a daily basis. Here we select the time and let's say we want to run this at 11 o'clock oops there we go at night every day and starting today. Uh, this is the username on the machine and you have to enter your password twice and that's it there we now have it in the schedule and every night at 11 it'll run that a really nice thing about rsync that uh, I didn't explain earlier one reason I use it is that uh, rsync will not copy a file that's already been copied or backed up now if you modify the file and then it will also copy it over into the backup area. But if the file already exists there and you've not modified it, then it won't bother copying it. Which means the first run will take however long it takes to copy everything. But every run after that will be much faster because it only has to copy those files that have changed. If uh, you're using this to back up uh, or maintain a backup of, say, uh, photographs or videos, It'll only have to work on the new ones. It won't have to back up the entire thing every time, which means it'll be much faster over time. Whereas, again, the first run may take hours and hours.
but after that it may take it may go very quickly and be done in less than an hour. So anyway, that's the reason I use our sync and that's how to set it up. Uh, if there's anything uh, need any help with it, uh, don't hesitate to give me a call. Let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Bye.